Hi, it's Jennifer with Jennifer at Home, and I'm truly grateful you're here today. I'm so happy you joined me to make some super easy homemade pretzels and some super easy delicious cheese dipping sauce. These are the ingredients we'll need to make these super soft, delicious homemade pretzels. We'll need yeast, water, flour, salt, vegetable oil, cooking spray, baking soda, boiling water, butter, and sugar. So I have one and three quarter cups of water, and it's hot water. We don't want it too hot. It needs to be about 95 degrees to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what I have right there. We don't want it to be too hot because if it's too hot, the water will kill the yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've got my teaspoon of sugar and my two one quarter cup packages of yeast. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the yeast and mix that in. And then I'm gonna put in the sugar. And we'll wanna let this mixture sit for about 10 minutes. While the yeast is setting up, I'm gonna go ahead and add the five cups of flour, the half a cup of remaining sugar, and the salt to the stand mixer. I have it fitted with the dough hook, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and just let these mix to combine. Of course, you wanna just put it on low because if not, you might have a really big mess now, as you can see, the yeast has really activated. That It has been in there with the sugar and the warm water, and it's very well activated. So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna raise this up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the yeast in. So there goes the yeast mixture. And then I'm gonna put in the oil, and we're gonna mix this on medium-low for five minutes. The dough will start clinging to the dough hook and then it'll turn into a big ball on the dough hook and it'll completely pull away from the sides of the bowl and then we'll know that it's ready to start working it for our pretzels. Now our dough has gotten nice and shiny and it's completely formed into a ball right around the dough hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and take the dough off. Now that the dough has gotten all around in a big ball on our dough hook, I'm gonna take this cooking spray and lightly spray this big bowl. And I'm gonna take some plastic wrap and spray this as well because the dough is gonna double in size. We'll put it in this big bowl and then we're going to let it sit for about an hour and while it's rising we'll have it covered with plastic wrap and I don't want it to stick to the plastic wrap when it gets too tall. And this is what the dough looks like. It's nice and shiny and it got it in a really nice ball so I'm just going to put the whole entire thing right in the great big bowl. And we'll want to keep this in a nice warm place. And then I'm going to cover it with the sprayed plastic wrap. I'm just going to loosely cover this, just like that. So it has plenty of room to rise. This wonderful cheese sauce can be used on anything, but it's especially good on these pretzels. It's nice and thick and creamy, and it's just wonderful to dip the pretzels in. The pretzels are really easy and really fun to make, as is the cheese sauce. It's just delicious, and you can change the cheeses and put any flavor of cheese you'd like. Today, I'm using cream cheese, cheddar cheese, and gouda cheese in mine, but you can use whatever cheese that you like and just change the recipe. Speaking of recipe, I'll have the recipes for both of these listed below so that you can easily find them and make these recipes. While our pretzel dough is rising, this is a great time to go ahead and start making our fabulous cheese sauce to dip the pretzels in. I'm gonna put this butter in here 
and I'm gonna get it melted on medium heat and I'm just gonna stir it around until it starts to bubble. Then I'll add in the flour and mix it together really, really well. And th these recipes for the wonderful cheese sauce and the homemade pretzels will be linked below. It'll be listed there for you to go and see it so that you can copy that and make these recipes yourself. The butter is just about to start to bubble. I see the bubbles coming up now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my flour. And I'll just stir this constantly until it's all mixed together really, really well. We're gonna cook this butter and flour together for one to two minutes to make sure we cook out that raw flour taste. Okay, that's great. Now we're gonna remove it from the heat and we're gonna add in our milk. I'll just put this on the back burner here and add in and mix our milk into this mixture. Now that we have this all mixed in, I'm gonna put it back on the beet burner on the front that was hot, and I'll turn this back on. I'm gonna keep whisking this together and I'm gonna to wanna to leave this and keep mixing it until this mixture coats the back of the spoon. But just remember to keep stirring it constantly. We'll wanna stir this for about four to five minutes until it thickens. Okay, it's been about four or four and a half minutes and this mixture is really thickening up nicely. Let me check the back of this spoon. And to do that, you just coat the back of the spoon, let it get around on there, and then you just swipe your finger through. And if it leaves a line that doesn't close together or disappear, then you know it's ready. So now it's time to start adding the cheeses and our seasonings. I'm gonna start with the softened cream cheese. This is cream cheese, about six ounces, and remember the recipe will be listed below so you can easily find this. Once I get this, the room temperature cream cheese mixed in, then I'll add in the Gouda cheese and the cheddar cheese. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cheddar cheese and the Gouda cheese. I'll mix these in really quick because these will melt really fast. And now it's time to mix in our other ingredients. In here, I have some fresh ground pepper, some kosher salt, some cayenne pepper, and some smoked paprika. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat now because this is mixing together really nicely and I don't want to scorch or burn my cheeses. So I'll just keep mixing them until everything is combined really nicely. And there we have it, a wonderful cheese dip for our pretzels. The dough has been rising for one hour. I have it in this big bowl. Let me show you what it looks like. And this is just what it looks like. I've turned the dough out onto the flour surface, and now I'm gonna start dividing it up into 16 equal pieces. So I'll just break it in half in the middle. And this is how I'll do it. I'll just keep breaking it down. And just keep pinching each piece in half. And when we're done, we'll want these balls to be about the size of a large golf ball or a small tennis ball. Okay, there we have 16. Now if you have some that look a little bit smaller than others, that's okay. Just pinch some off of a larger one and just add it right on. So I'm gonna evaluate and see if they all look about the same size. And I think these will be just fine. They don't have to be perfect, 
just try to get them as equal as you can. Now that I have all of these rolled out, or broken in half to the, to make 16, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a tray here and go ahead and put all of these on the tray. I just wanna roll them into a nice ball. Now that I have 16 balls separated and rolled, I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour on my baking mat here and I'm gonna start rolling this. I wanna stretch it a little bit, not too much. Just squeeze it with your hands. Start pulling it out a little bit. You don't wanna tear it. So once I get it a little bit stretched, I'm gonna just start rolling it. And we're gonna to wanna to roll this out and you can pull it a little bit along the way. I wanna make this about, oh, probably about 24 inches. And I actually have a ruler here at the end with the markings on it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do the best you can to get it stretched out and rolled nice and thin, about two feet long. Let me show you how it looks to twist it up into the traditional pretzel shape. So we just lay out the long strand of dough in a U shape, then just lay it over top of each other Try to keep the ends the same height, and then wrap it around again, just like that. You wanna open up the loop a little bit and just flip it right over. Press it down, and there we have it. The traditional pretzel shape. Now that I have all of the pretzels ready on the tray, I'm going to take a big pan of boiling water and I'm going to slowly add in a third of a cup of baking soda. And be sure to add this very, very slowly because it's gonna start bubbling up. And if you add it too quick, you don't wanna overboil it and have your pan boil over. So just add it gradually until it's all incorporated. Just stir it in, make sure you have it mixed in really well into the water. And then what we're gonna do is take our pretzels one at a time. I'm gonna just take this and drop it right in the water and let it go underneath. And it only needs just to take a minute or so, just actually a quick little drench, a quick little bath in the baking soda water. And then I have a slotted spatula that I'm gonna shake off all of the extra water. And then we'll just put it right back on our parchment paper tray with all of the other pretzels. We'll do one at a time. And we wanna put these back on the tray about an inch and a half apart. They need a little bit of room in between so that they will rise a little bit more and not get stuck together. And we'll just keep on going with all of these until I have all 16 done. You can see they'll start to float to the top and then it's time to lift them out and try to get off as much of the extra liquid as you can before placing it on the tray. As soon as we place it on the tray while well, it's still wet and we will get this this is the kosher salt, we'll get this to stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this on right away before it gets too dry. All right, I'll just keep moving right along until I'm done with all the pretzels. I have the oven preheated at 425. Now I'm gonna put the pretzels in the oven and bake them for about eight minutes until they're golden brown. The pretzels are fresh from the oven. They smell absolutely amazing, just like a bakery. I have some melted butter and I'm just gonna go right along and brush some melted butter right on the top of all of the pretzels. Just brush it right over the salt. 
And at this point in time, if you'd like to add a little bit more salt, you can always sprinkle some more salt or any other flavors or seasonings that you would like to add to your pretzel. Maybe some garlic powder or garlic salt. I like to sprinkle on some special topping that I got from Trader Joe's. And it's called Everything Bagel. And it is really, really nice. Let me show you what that looks like. If you shop at Trader Joe's, you can look for this. It's very, very inexpensive. It's just a few dollars. And it's a bagel seasoning mix. But you can get this and it has toasted sesame seeds and all sorts of different things. So you can sprinkle that right on top of the butter and add any type type of seasoning that you'd like to add to your pretzel. You could even add at this time a mixture of sugar and cinnamon. Okay, now that we have the butter on top, these pretzels are ready to eat. Let me show you what they look like on the inside. super super hot you can see they look really great they have that nice springy texture that a pretzel should have and as you can see this pretzel dip is wonderful it's such a nice wonderful cheesy dip to dip the pretzels in And here's how the wonderful pretzels with super easy cheese dip turned out. They are absolutely delicious. Thank you so much for being here today. I wish you could have a bite of these pretzels dipped in the cheese sauce because they are just so delicious and so they smell so good. But you could make these yourself at home and then you'll realize just how easy and how delicious they are. I really hope you give these a try and I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click the notification bell and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you next time.